I always find it weird that it says do not freeze. I mean, who who is freezing their lash glue? I'm, I'm not doing that. Are you guys, are you guys freezing? Hey everyone, Asalaamu As Alaikum. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my 2020 makeup favorites. And I know it's been quite a year, but we're not gonna talk about that in this video. So the first thing that we're gonna start off with, and I have actually filmed this makeup look. I'm gonna be honest, the cheeks did not come out how I wanted them to. I needed like more of a cool tone blush to go with the sort of pinky tones going on with my eyeshadow, but unfortunately, it got a bit too warm over here, okay? So we'll get to it anyway, but I filmed this in the style of a what's in my makeup bag video, which I did maybe one or two of this year and quite a few of in the past on my channel, where as I'm talking about the products, you're gonna see me actually applying them. So the very first thing that of course I have to mention is the Amber Elise Let Cream Concentrate. This has been a favorite for years and years and years. I cannot imagine my life without this. I have got two backups, that's how much I love it. Anytime it's on sale, anytime it's 20% off anywhere, I typically pick it up because I'm like, I know I'm gonna use it. It's just the best primer and moisturizer before makeup. It's not the cheapest of items, but you don't need a lot to be fair. Like a little bit does go kind of a long way. So it is just really, really gorgeous. And I have tried doing my makeup with other primers and other moisturizers, but I feel like nothing quite is the same for me. So yeah, that's definitely a favorite. And then onto the corrector. So unfortunately, I really thought that by the end of 2020, I would have found my perfect corrector of all time. But I just seem to have this really bad luck where every time I find a corrector I really like and enjoy, it gets discontinued. And I don't know what that's about, but it's the most frustrating thing. I find that a lot of correctors are a bit too pinky in tone. And my kind of dark circles, which are still not great to be honest they need much more of a peachy tone but then some peachy tones go far more to the orange spectrum so it's really i'm very, very fussy when it comes to correctors and honestly the best thing that i have found so far this year is the elf hydrating camo concealer so the one with the white lid and this is in the shade tan sand now for some strange reason my concealer seems so separated in the pot so it's literally like got red pigment coming out which is a bit weird I've never seen that happen before with concealers but if you just mix it up it kind of goes away but anyway this is pretty much a really fantastic tone it's a good cancelling shade I you can actually see me applying it right now I film my makeup so you guys can see what I mean so I've actually put this under my eyes I put this around my mouth where I've got dark patches and on acne scarring and it just does a world of difference for whatever foundation I'm going to put on top. So the only thing is because it is a liquid concealer and not a cream finish, I do find that I have to sort of let it set a little bit and really properly blend it out otherwise it will move around and sometimes when I'm in a rush that is a bit annoying. So I am looking for the perfect creamier finish corrector shade that is a perfect tone for me and if you guys have any suggestions from ethical brands then let me know down below. But yeah that's definitely a fave and then in terms of foundations this year, I have got quite a few um, and some of these are actually not new to my collection of 2020, so that's the thing. This video is not going to be like all brand new makeup released in 2020. I am not a YouTuber who gets PR like that, okay? Apologise in advance for the packaging. This foundation, by the way, leaks like crazy. I've never owned a foundation that leaks like this in my life. But this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills foundation, a luminous foundation, and I've got this in the shade... 310c it's the one that I'm wearing today and it is a tad deep for me this is definitely a summer shade for me I could do a probably two shades less than this for my year round foundation shade however the coverage of this is really good medium to full coverage I find it's got quite a satin natural finish almost like demi matte your skin still looks like skin in my opinion but it looks like a flawless better version of skin, the best version that you'd want it to. And yeah, I really, really like this and I think it is definitely worth the price. It is more pricey, but obviously I always wait for a sale. You guys know me. And I could have stocked up on that actually. Another foundation that I'm going to include but not really talk about too much because I've spoken about it for so many years is a last year glow. That is still definitely a favourite. I literally just picked up a backup in the Debenham cell because they're closing down. But then the next foundation is the Fenty Hydrating Foundation. This is in the shade 290. Again, this is a a little bit more of my summer tone. I mean, I could get away with this. The only thing is it looks very yellow when you first apply it. And then when you blend it out, it looks fine. I've actually got a look going up on my Instagram. 
um, just before the end of the year. So I don't know when this video is going to be out, fingers crossed soon. But yeah, the video that's going up on Instagram shows me applying this. But I've used this a lot and I've also reviewed this as well. I did, I think I did like a first impressions wear test on this. So I'll leave all these videos I'm talking about linked below. But this one is gorgeous. So whereas this is more full coverage, I say this is more of a medium coverage. But for me, it's the finish. This is such a luminous, dewy foundation um, without being shiny, without being overly dewy. And I just think it's gorgeous. It, it's basically what I want the Makeup Forever Ultra HDs to be like. I used to love that foundation. I made a video about it recently. I'll leave it down below as well. That is not in my good books anymore, but this definitely is. It's just beautiful. It is hydrating as well. Like, you can never, ever see any dry patches. My skin is combination, so I've got an oily T-zone and pretty normal around the rest of my face. But I find it's really forgiving, like, over scarring and stuff. It doesn't cling on to any, like, acne, and that's something I've struggled with this year. So I do really like this. Obviously, the coverage is not full, but that's fine, because when I use it with a concealer, that's you know, it works really well, and I definitely, definitely am going to be repurchasing this. And then along the same lines as, like, talking about acne, a foundation that I didn't really use when I first got it is the Jouer Essential High Coverage Cream Foundation. This has got hyaluronic acid in it, and it's matte, and it's got no oil in it. And I have this in two shades, in Cameo and in Latte. Basically, this foundation is extremely full coverage. So this has been my favourite foundation for the days where I have just felt really unconfident looking in the mirror and my scarring's been really bad. I've had breakouts and I just just can't stand the sight of my skin and that sounds like a really awful thing to say but I think for someone who never had acne growing up when you suddenly have acne it can be a real shock to the system because you're used to having like this clear smooth skin and suddenly you're dealing with a whole different skin type so for me this foundation has been really nice for the days where I've just needed that extra boost because I definitely am somebody who I will conceal my blemishes first and then I'll go over a foundation but this is kind of like an all-in-one and I can rely on this to be really full coverage and it is more of a matte finish definitely but I feel like it's not a flat finish for some people it would be too too full coverage when I had non-acne prone skin it was a bit too much for me I didn't really use it but it did look really good but I do tend to kind of reach for this a bit more often than I did before so I would say it's a favorite because I have worn this a fair few amount of times and I've always liked the way my skin looks with it on and then finally for a more affordable option my favorite drugstore foundation this year has been the Wet n Wild Golden Beige um, Photo Focus Foundation. Sorry, Golden Beige is actually my shade. And this is just gorgeous. This is the original foundation. I say it's actually in between these two in that it's got quite a nice, like, satin, glowy finish. It doesn't cling onto any dry patches. It doesn't make any of your blemishes look worse. And it's got a nice medium to buildable coverage. The longevity is not the best uh, of all time. And I will say that about Fenty as well. Both of these longevity is not the best. But there's so many ways that you can enhance your longevity, obviously with a powder, a setting spray. So yeah, that's not too much of an issue for me. And I just think the shade match for Golden Beige is really beautiful. I have tried the Luminous Foundation. I don't know if I talked about it yet, but I'll, I'll talk about that next year at some point on my channel. So concealers, I mean, I'm not going to go over this for too long because you guys know, right? So the concealer I use today is obviously Kevin Aquan. I use 08 around my mouth to cover this big spot over here and any other discoloration I can still see and then I use 06 under my eyes because it's quite a heavy makeup that I've done today quite a full glam so 06 works really well for that my typical color is 07 which I have actually finished can you guys believe I've finished a Kevin Aquan pot like there's so much product in this and that shows how much I love it and I was so so lucky because I managed to get a backup for myself from TK Maxx but yeah Kevin Aquan is forever a favorite and then from the drugstore side I really really liked the elf concealers both of them so this is the one that's supposed to be the dupe for the Tarte Shape Tape and this one is supposed to be the dupe for the Too Faced concealer. This one I find is just great because it gives you very very decent coverage and it has more of a matte finish but it does set quite quickly so you have to work with it quite fast 
And then this one, like I said, because I use the darker colour for a corrector, it is very hydrating. I do find it lacks a little bit in coverage, but this is really going to be really good for people with dry skin. And if you can manage to find your shade for day to day, I find I feel like this one will be a really good one for just sort of concealing over areas, but not wearing foundation, like a day to day kind of concealer, a no makeup makeup kind of product. Um, it's really comfortable on the skin, whereas this one, I think if you've got dry skin, you probably wouldn't really enjoy this. But they're both worth checking out and I have so many shades of this you guys um, I do use them in like my little videos here a bit especially on Instagram and I try to remember to put the shade names I have so many different shades as well like in my hand here I've got medium warm and I've got medium sand I was originally using light beige a lot for highlighting medium warm is quite a good everyday brightening shade for me yeah it's quite yellow it works as like not an overly bright shade like it could not compete with Kevin O'Quan but it is a decent amount of brightening for every day so yeah I've got a lot of shades if you guys would like more in-depth videos on the elf concealers let me know because I'd be happy to do that or maybe on Instagram do let me know down below <laughs> now let's everyone take a breath I need to take a deep breath <laughs> and then we shall move on to powders for powders I would say that my favorite high-end powder I don't know I'm pretty sure I mentioned this last year is the Rodeo Instaglam Banana 05 Yellow Tone Highlighting Powder. I still have this and I have hit heavy, heavy pan on this. Now guys, this full size is expensive. Safia Tasneem was so sweet. She actually sent this out to me. She had like the same version in another compact and she did not need to send me out a powder, but she did and it was so, so kind of her. I love this. This is the best under eye setting powder ever. I also do really like the, the Marc Jacobs one, the one that comes in a double pan. But I don't know if they do that anymore, but that was like a previous favourite. This is like definitely my favourite bougie high-end yellow powder for sure. And then in terms of drugstore, I don't have it to hand, but I really do love... Right, I went and got it because you know what? It's 2020 favourites. I can't be lazy. <laughs> So this is my favourite drugstore powder for under the eyes. I will say this is more obviously yellow than the rodeo one. This is just a bit more subtle, but they both do the same job. Obviously for a special occasion, which there hasn't been many of in 2020, but for a special, special occasion, this is my go-to. And then this is like great for every day. And in terms of the bronzer side, I don't really love it. So I don't really use that. And then for my loose powder favourite of 2020. I have actually got quite a few powders this year, but I don't feel like I've used them enough to be able to say whether I love them tremendously or not, you know? So the one that has remained tried and tested is the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. I feel like for my skin tone and lighter, this works really well, but I feel like if you're slightly deeper than me, it will probably be better for you guys to try um one of the Huda Beauty ones. I do have the Huda Beauty pancake powder, but I've not used it enough, like I said, to really say, yeah, yeah I absolutely love it. So this is my favourite of 2020. It literally just blurs the skin. I never feel like my under eyes look crepey once I've lightly baked with this. I can put this all over my face and on me, it does not leave a grey tone at all. I feel like it is very translucent but up to a certain skin tone because I know that people with deeper skin tones, I've watched videos of them and they're like, that does not leave me looking very, oh, very snatched. Eyebrows, this year definitely has been the year of pencils and brown mascaras for me. I didn't really use pomades because I just find them to be such a faff now, honestly. I only used pomades when I'd run out of my pencils and I didn't really use powders. Because my brows are quite sparse at the front, I feel like powders don't really do much. So a brow pencil is really able to draw in and mimic hairs and just add what my brows lack, basically. And it should come as no surprise to any of you that my favourite one has been the Revolution Pro Microblading Pencil. This one I have brought countless times. I stocked up on it in my Beauty Bay haul because I know I'm going to buy it anyway, so I might as well you know, buy it and uh, buy it at a discount. So the shade that I typically get is chocolate, but I also get sometimes dark brown and I mix and match them. Sometimes I feel like chocolate can pour a bit too warm, 
but it for the most part like it does the job guys sorry i just have to put some lip gloss on okay so the eyebrow mascara again should come as no surprise to anybody on my channel is the essence make me brow now if you guys have not tried this you are missing out i'm telling you now this is a much cheaper version of the benefit give me brow it's obviously a very blatant dupe give me brow make me brow but this is three pounds and that is like 15 16 17 plus pounds it's a no-brainer. I literally have these in several different shades. The one that I use today is 02 Brownie Brows. What it does is it adds volume to your eyebrows, which I know it might sound absolutely bonkers, but it, it really does help to make them look fuller because it's just coating the actual hairs. And for me, because I've got thinner brows and more sparser brows at the front, it just adds so much more zhuzh to them, <laughs> which I can't achieve with any other product. So I find like nine out of 10 times when I'm doing my makeup, I like to use this, it sets them in place, which is also a great thing because nobody wants melting eyebrows. Okay, <laughs> moving on to eyeshadows. This was a hard one in a way, but then when I really thought about it, like what are my two most loved and used palettes of 2020? They were these two babies. So the first one we'll talk about is the Viseart Viseart Warm Edit Palette. I've done two whole videos dedicated just to this palette. So I'm not going to talk about it in too much detail. But all you need to do is have a look at the shades and you will understand why I love it so much. The formula of these is a one. I know now why this is like a makeup artist brand. The quality is insane. And I'll be honest, once you've tried formulas like this, it is very hard to go back to cheaper eyeshadows. And it's not me being snobby or bougie, but I'm just saying like, they are small, by the way, they are small, but a little bit goes a very long way. And they're so nice to blend. Like that's what I have to say, that like, they're so easy, easy to blend. Whereas sometimes I find cheaper eyeshadows can be quite difficult to blend. But don't get me wrong, I do love a drugstore eyeshadow too. And I will share that in a minute. My next high-end palette favourite is this one by Auntie Jackie X ABH. This is one of the most stunning palettes I have ever owned in my whole life. And I do feel like when you look at the shade selection at first, it almost looks a little bit chaotic. And there's not like a generic order to it how a lot of palettes are but that's what i love about it it's just so different this was made for women of color women with deeper skin tones and i just think i've got nothing else like this in my collection if you are looking to splurge on one eyeshadow palette and you've got a ton of neutrals already this is the one that I would go for. Don't get me wrong, I love the Soft Glam, I love uh, Modern Renaissance, but this honestly holds a special place in my heart. But yeah, there's not a single shade in here that I don't love. Probably the shades Wigglies and Sponsored and Lituation are my least used. All the rest of them I have used so many times and Zam, oh my goodness, Zam is what I was using in that Instagram video, my New Year's Eve like kind of look and wow. And then today I use Trust Issues like on my eyelid here. I use Trust Issues, I use Supreme, I use Pinker. There's so many countless colour combinations you could actually do with this and I really really love this with a combination of a more neutral palette like this because I find that this has the brow bone base that shade and the base shade actually and some more like sort of deeper neutral shades that you can use to warm up your look with and then you go in with this for your colour you know so I absolutely adore this would I recommend this palette for someone who's got no eyeshadow palettes and is starting from scratch? No, I think you need to go for something that has got your more neutrals in it. But I absolutely love that Jackie with her collab made something very, very special and spectacular, which to be honest, as Jackie and I know, like we can't expect anything less. That is just the kind of amazing human that she is. Let's go on to the rest of the eye stuff. So to be honest, the only real thing I'm gonna talk about here is this guy. I'm sure you've heard me talk about this plenty of times before. This is a Revolution Renaissance liner. For me, this just does the job. I love how comfortable it is to hold. It is literally like a pen, and I'm so used to using this tip. It is a felt tip. This is what the tip looks like. Let me do the whole focusy thing. There we go. Thank you so much for cooperating, camera. That's what the tip looks like. For people who are more used to a brush tip eyeliner, you might find this tricky at first, but honestly guys, there is no eyeliner that is as black, pigmented, 
and long lasting at this price point. I'm sure you can get some fantastic eyeliners for £20 plus, but the fact that this is like £5 and it will last me a good two to three months, I just couldn't ask for anything else. I'd much rather like repurchase this over and over than have to shell out £20, £30 every three months just for eyeliner. And I do wear eyeliner a lot. I love my good wing liner. I'm not saying goodbye to that anytime soon. I just feel like it's a part of me. It doesn't bleed, it doesn't smudge, and it does really last a decent amount of time, um, which I adore. And also, it's easy to take off because there's some eyeliners which are literally like sticky, tattoo, paint kind of liners, and they are not the ones. You do not want to have to struggle to take your liner off. So that's definitely a fave. Now for my mascara, I honestly don't have like a uh, one standout, incredible, amazing, wow, changed my life mascara. <laughs> I really like the pink one from Primark. I'm currently using a Charlotte Tilbury one, which I like, but again, it's not incredible and I am kind of against spending a ton of money on products like mascaras and liners for me personally some people like if you've got nice lashes if your lashes can look incredible with the right formula and stuff then absolutely go for it and spend your money girl spend your coin but for me my lashes are just meh they're not very thick they're not very long so I whenever I'm doing my makeup nicely I will wear lashes and on that note the lashes that was really hard to choose like one or two so a lot of my lashes are from ebay slash aliexpress because i find that they have some really good quality lashes on there the only problem with that is that obviously then when when someone's like oh what lashes are you wearing it's kind of hard to be like yeah it's this this style from this style you know sometimes it's a bit of a struggle but what i'm going to do is down in the description bar every single thing i'm talking about is going to be linked below that's going to take me a good two hours but we're going to do it because we're going to be a good YouTuber today. And um, yeah, I'm going to also add some of my favourite lashes. Some of them I really have liked some drugstore lashes as well. These ones are super, super natural. Um, and I know like some people might roll their eyes like natural lashes really. I got these ages ago uh, from eBay and I don't know if you can tell but they're just so light and fluttery. They do make a difference because when I had one on and I was struggling with the other one and it was, the struggle was real guys. <laughs> just think like should I just take them off? But then when I looked at the eye that it was on I was like no it does actually make a difference but they could look very very natural so if you're someone who doesn't like lashes as well or you're not the biggest fan but you want something to just take your look up a slight notch then I'll leave these link down below as well and on that note as well I wanted to talk about a new discovery of mine my favorite lash glue I've struggled with lash glue for a while I've tried a lot of different brands I've tried cheaper brands I've tried more expensive brands but this is my all-time favourite. This is the Duo Brush On Adhesive with vi uh, with vitamins. Oh, I don't know how vitamins are. Oh, that's news to me. <laughs> but this is in the tone dark. Anyway, <laughs> I recently purchased this. And unfortunately, I don't think you can get this from like UK drugstores, which is so annoying. But this is what the applicator looks like. Basically, the hack here is you put your lash glue onto the band which is so much easier than having to squeeze it on the back of your hand and do that and you know all that faff with the other applicators but then you also put a very thin line on top of your eyeliner and you just let it set a little bit and then when you put your lashes on they're going to be perfectly set and it's going to be a hundred times easier to apply lashes I promise you if you struggle with lashes get this lash adhesive and try it out and the other thing is you don't need to wait ages for it to get sticky or tacky it just does the thing which is great so I will leave the link down below to where I got this from it is an American site but I did not pay taxes because I did not put more than 15 pounds worth of products in my basket so if you stick to the 15 pound limit you can get this without having to pay any extra money and it's pretty affordable because it is a drugstore brand I'm just waiting for it to become easily available in the UK Fingers crossed. <laughs> I just realised I forgot to come back to my drugstore eyeshadow favourites. So this year I went a little bit crazy for the e.l.f. mini bite size eyeshadow palettes. I literally have them all. They are £3 each I think. They're just so affordable and their quality is really really decent. I love the fact that the size of these means that they're just so, so easy to travel with. Although I did say that high-end shadows are incredible and they are definitely worth saving up for. If you're somebody who is on a budget or you don't wear makeup very often but you want good quality stuff without breaking the bank, these are a really good place to start. So let's move on to the cheeks. So my bronzer of choice for 2020 has definitely been 
the NARS Laguna. Now this one is actually shattered and if I open this I would make the biggest mess ever so I'm not going to do that. But this one is just gorgeous. Laguna I feel like ticks all the right boxes. It is so good. Like the tone is perfect for my skin tone. It's not completely matte. You can get a matte one now actually I've seen but it's not 100% matte. And that slight tiny tiny bit of shimmer which is very hard to detect like on the skin just gives you overall actual glowy bronze up finish. I just I adore it so much. I have tried other bronzers this year but that's definitely one that stood out for me and then in terms of contour products I don't have it to hand. I cannot think where I might have put it. I, I thought I saw it there. Do you know what after I film this video when I put all this stuff away it's gonna like, scream out to me and be like I'm here. But the Huda Beauty Tantor is an absolute favourite. I will leave the name of the shade I've got down below and I love it. It's so so easy to blend and it gives a really beautiful warmth and slight contour to the face. I love that product from hers. And then when it comes to blushes again no surprise to any of you guys who've been here for a while but NARS has definitely won top place and this year I was lucky enough to receive this as a birthday gift for my sister-in-law. This is the NARS Hot Fix Cheek Palette and I've hardly used this to be honest because it's come in its own little Selfridges bag and it's so cute and bougie and I've sort of like since I move I've sort of just kept it like in there but let's just appreciate this palette for what it is. It's gorgeous. Now this shade is actually not as muted as it I thought it would be. I put it on today and it is actually quite orangey, more of an orange shade. It pulls more orange than pink, even though it looks quite pink in there. But the most gorgeous shades, and I love this highlight. It's called Gold Leash. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. It is so, so stunning. I have not been this excited about a highlighter in a while. I've applied both the blusher and the highlighter in the clip so you can see, but I wasn't expecting this to be this shade. Now, in terms of favourite NARS blushes, I'm doing a series on my Instagram right now where I'm doing reels and reviews. So, on the screen, you can see the colour of the blush and you can see me applying it and then in the actual like the text part of the reel I've given it a whole review the colour what Nars say about it my rating I'm doing it in giraffe ratings <laughs> I'm really happy with this little series I've started so if you're wanting to know I'm more specifically colours and if you're not really interested in the blush palettes definitely check that out what I will say is that the Nars blush palettes are the best value for money ever you usually get at least three or four highly pigmented blushes and um a, and either a bronzer or a highlighter as well and you just save so much money and they last you forever. I have at least three or four NARS blush palettes in my collection. I'm not going to buy any more because I've literally, I've got to a point now in my life where I am satisfied with makeup and <laughs> my mum will be happy to know and I only this year in the sales, I only brought back up stuff in the Boxing Day sales. I did not buy any new bronzers, blushes, like anything like that. And what I am going to be doing um, towards the end of this year to the start of next year is doing a clear out, viving my makeup space I guess, and being honest with myself about what I'm actually using and what I'm not using and getting rid of stuff. And then possibly, you know, I'm going to do another clear out like in six months time and then um, by the, sort of the end of next year I'll be able to see like what do I actually need. But unless I see a really really good deal or something that massively excites me, which is hard these days, I'm not likely to buy a lot more makeup because I'm very happy with what I've got and I'm at the moment I'm just like in such a good place in terms of using stuff up and it's such a good feeling to use stuff up to. The next blusher that I've had to give a little shout out in this video to is this Hourglass one. I do have their palette if you guys remember two years ago when I got married I did a little bridal beauty haul and I treated myself to my first ever Hourglass palette and I really love that still as well but this blush in particular is Mood Exposure. It's just gorgeous. I recently did a blush reel on this as well because I love it so much and I actually applied this over the top of my NARS blushes because I just felt like those blushes were they just were the wrong tone and this sort of toned it down a little bit so this is actually described as a plum by Hourglass but I would say that although it does have I guess it does have plum tones in there but because it's infused with the Hourglass the original powder it just looks so beautiful if you are any tones deeper than I am then this probably won't show up on you one of my favorite Instagrammers ever she commented on the real thing unfortunately it didn't show up on her and I think she's probably like Barcelona or Syracuse and NARS so this is definitely one for people my skin tone or lighter but I just love the formula and finish of these powders it is expensive don't get me wrong this little size is like 20 pounds something but you don't need a lot 
and I feel like the finish is gorgeous. Like if you are somebody who is scared of blush or you're over how overpigmented it looks or you just don't want to look like a clown ever, then these blushes are the way to go and I recommend just again saving up and splurging on one or two of these because you're not going to hate blush ever again it's just going to give you a really beautiful lift from within glow without any shimmer without any glittery chunks it's the most flattering formula ever and I absolutely love it. Okay, moving on to highlighters. So like I said a little bit earlier, I haven't brought any new highlighters because I have way too many in my collection to go through, to be honest. But some of the ones that I've been loving, well, first of all, is the one I tried today by NARS. It's just the most beautiful finish. This one I've used so many times in my videos, especially on Instagram, it is the e.l.f. Jelly Highlighter. And this one is in the shade Dew. And I also have the more golden toned one. It is the most weirdest formula ever and it literally moves around. It looks, it reminds me a lot of Flubber. I know I said that in that first video with Casey, but when I look at it, it reminds me of the film Flubber from my childhood. But honestly guys, it's gorgeous. It's the most unique formula. It applies on the skin like wet, glassy looking highlights. And it is easy to overdo, so you do have to kind of play around with this. I find that the best way to use this is to use it before you've powdered at all. So it can merge in with like the liquid or cream products you've got on and then powder after this. Because sometimes it can look a little odd over the top of powder. But this is gorgeous by itself. It's just gorgeous as a base for highlight. I've used this so much and I have like at least two of these and then another highlight that I really really love is this one by um Jouer I just realized that the actual word Jouer has rubbed off because I've used this so much this is a little mini size that I got in a Court Beauty goodie bag a while ago and I it's still going strong I love it so much this is in the shade rose gold it's just a very unique highlighter like don't get me wrong I love me gold highlighters too I love ABH so Hollywood but they don't do it anymore I'm not gonna share highlighters that you guys can't get hands on this one is beautiful now I wouldn't typically have gone for this so I'm so glad that I went and got that goodie bag because I would not have discovered this in my life this has got a really beautiful pinky gold shift in it and it looks quite intense to be honest it is quite intense but you can blend it to make it look less intense or if you're going for a full glam look this is just stunning especially with a wet brush I love the shift it's so unique it's just a goldeny pink shift I think for medium brown warm skin tones if you haven't tried rose gold by Jouer it's definitely worth a shout and I will let you guys um I'll leave a link down below hopefully it's still on sale somewhere obviously it's still at the end of the day sales probably by the time this is up there'll be like new year sales there's always sales at this time of the year so if you are looking for a different highlight that's not your typical gold or champagne or silver this one is definitely one to try and then this is no surprise because I've spoken about this many many times on my channel before and I've repurchased this about three times my favorite powder of all time is the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush flaws finish powder in the shade zero two absolutely love this especially like I've just recently rediscovered the whole buffing over buffing over the rest of your makeup technique that was so big like two years ago um this is gorgeous for that basically you just get a flat top brush and you swirl it in and as I'm showing you on screen right now you literally just gently buff this over the top of your makeup and it just gives you the most airbrush finish the other day I was on my stories and it looked like I had a filter on that's how gorgeous my skin looked and it was literally just a combination of my favorite products and this guy on top I will forever repurchase this. I just wish that she had like 10 shades by now because shade 1, 2, and 3 is not enough and it's certainly not inclusive enough. Okay, before I go on to the lips, I have to give a shout out to eye toppers and things like that. I think there's one white. Oh, yeah, this is this one here. I have loved these this year more than ever. I mean, I've had this Stila Mini Trio set for the longest time, and I feel like they're finally coming to the end of their lives now, and I'm definitely going to be wanting to repurchase another set of these. These are their original Glitter and Glow Liquid Eyeshadows. They make the most gorgeous difference, the most biggest pop to the eyes, and I feel like... 
they're definitely worth every penny. I don't know that I would buy it a full size. Diamond Dust is like a really stunning silver colour, whereas Smoky Storm is uh, more of a deeper shade. And then this pink one I don't use as much. This is Kiss and Karma. So I'd probably pick these two if I had to pick a full size one. But I would really like to get another set with maybe different shades. These are stunning. And I really think that in their tr little trio mini sets, they're so perfect because realistically, unless you're a makeup artist, you're not going to get through a ton of products. So having these to try out at bargain price is great and I'll let you guys know on my insta slash twitter if I find this on a good sale in the next coming days and then I've rediscovered glitter again towards the end of this year these are just my little certified pots I got these years ago legit I've used this so many times and it looks like it's brand new because you only need a tiny bit glitter just has its own realm of things obviously it's very messy obviously you're gonna have glitter on you for the next three days once you use it but it's so fun and I feel like one of the positives of quarantine and lockdown is that we've had a lot more time to do what makes us happy and for me that's just playing with makeup again like I used to do like back in the day and these have been an absolute fave and then this sleek eye art precision liquid eye colors love these they're quite different to the last two i've just mentioned because they don't have any glitter in them but they are just like a little brush tip thing and they just add a little bit of something extra they're not too over the top which i like so you can kind of just add a tiny bit of this to add a little bit of interest to your eye or just add it i like to quite add these under my wing just to give it a bit of a 3d dimension look and there's so many different shades this one here is in the shade symbolism but the one I probably use the most is Illuminism, which is this one. You can even just put these all over your eyelid and blend them out and leave it like that. Or even use it as a base for your eyeshadows. Love these and they're very, very affordable. Primark Face Glue, by the way, is great. Use this with glitters and loose gems. But then also, this is from Primark 2. This is the Liquid Glitter Eyeshadow. And I think it's just in the shade Gold. And I have used this so much since I got this. It is... I would say it's probably the most similar thing to the Stila uh, Glitter and Glows. Probably like, actually this is more opaque and more pigmented than the Stila Liquid Glitter and Glows. You've got more glitter in the Stila one and you've got more glow in the Primark one, if that makes sense. Hopefully you guys can see that. Both similar. Obviously this one is a lot cheaper and... You know, I'm not, I don't really use this for the same effect, but what I love this for is I love to just take a matte brown shadow, put it all over my crease and my eyelid, and then just take this gold liquid eyeshadow from Primark and just tap it on top, and it just looks really intense and beautiful. And yeah, that was like four or five pounds, so really affordable as well. Okay, moving on to the final category, and then we are done. Well done for sticking with me, guys. I'm pretty much just going to run through these. I'm not going to talk about them in too much detail because 2020 was the year that I did a humongous over an hour and a half long video all about my lipstick collection. So if you guys are interested in my whole collection and declustering it with me and then swatching most of the shades as well so you can see what it looks like on me, then I'll leave that video link down below. There was so many hours of labour that went into that video, but I'm really proud of it. And I'm also really proud that I got rid of 40 lipsticks. 40 lipsticks. Which, yes, Houston... I I have a problem. I have a problem. <laughs> but let's start with lip liners. So my favourites of this year have been the Jordana Easy Liner in the shade Tawny. This, I don't even know if you can get this anymore, but I remember Carly Bible talked about this ages ago and I have loved it this year so much. It's such a good everyday shade. And I'm actually coming to the end of that, which is very sad. I've also discovered for the first time the Barry M lip liners. This one's in the shade Russet and it's just a really nice neutral lip liner for every day. It's a wooden pencil type, not a rolling up one, which I like. And the shade is just gorgeous. A lot of these are comparable to the MAC ones apparently. I wouldn't know because I don't buy from MAC, but for £5 I feel like you cannot go wrong. Obviously it goes without saying that the Rimmel pencil lip liners are my absolute favourites as well. I feel like the shades have changed a little bit, but Tiramisu and Spice are my faves from Rimmel. And then, this is a new brand that I discovered this year. It's a black owned brand and it's a small business, but look at that packaging. You would be forgiven for thinking that this was a very high end. These are gorgeous. These are the Emeline Cosmetics Metamorphosis 
Velvet Long Wear Lip Definers. This is in the shade Marrakesh. This one, and I've got Morocco as well. I've shared and swatched these on my Instagram. So if you want to know more about that, go ahead over there. I'll leave a link down below. Really beautiful, creamy formula. These are really good for if you get very, very dry lips and you don't want something that's more drying as well for a lip liner. But the longevity is definitely there. So love these so much. Then for my liquid lipsticks, um, I think my faves definitely were these three brands. I still love ABH, don't get me wrong, but Gerard Cosmetics, everything nice. Soda Beauty, I've loved Trendsetter. And then I've also just loved the Dose of Colors liquid lipsticks. I've loved rediscovering them when I did my decluttering video. It was so much fun to see the shades I have and then to incorporate them into my looks. And I have started doing um, a lip wardrobe thing on my Instagram as well because I feel like so many times when I'm doing any kind of look, I've used three or four different products and then someone's like, what's on your lips? And I'm like, um. <laughs> so whenever I'm trying to film my makeup, I try to like do a little bit of a reel. So if you want to know some of my favorite lip combos, again, make sure you follow me on Instagram. And then my favorite lipstick formula, I, I haven't worn that much lipstick to be honest with you, but I really love, again, the Dose of Colors ones. This one is in the shade Toast and I got this in a pack of four. It's just a really nice formula because it's like a demi matte, so it lasts a decent amount of time on your lips. It doesn't slip and slide around, but it's super, super comfortable. And I really appreciate it for that. And then finally, the last but not least things I need to talk about are lip glosses. So actually, this one here is a Huda Beauty cream lips that she's called it, but I do think it's a little, it's like a very pigmented lip gloss love this so much and then i also have the fenty beauty gloss bomb this is the original in fenty glow really like this it does lean quite more orangey but i just love this and i've worn this so much and it's taken a proper battering that's when you know you love a lip product when it looks like it's been chewed up <laughs> and then my favorite 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 drugstore lip gloss is the essence shine 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 ones the wet look lip glosses this one is in the shade 10 dress up our lips and this is what I'm wearing right now they're just so good all the ones I mentioned they're just not sticky they've got decent pigmentation and you know they don't smell overly strong they don't taste of anything they're just great lip glosses across the different price points right, I'm trying to think have I missed anything out but I don't think so I think that's my run-up of my whole 2020 favorites for the makeup department there's also a skincare 2020 favorites which has gone up already so if you've watched that thank you so much for your support and also yeah thanks so much guys for all the love on the content I've created this year it means so much and I really want 2021 to be my most consistent and best year yet so I really appreciate the watch time, the likes, the comments, you know, the shares, all of that. Keep doing that, please. It really helps me out. And um, I will see you very, very soon in my next video. Take care, everyone. Bye.